our theme and idea to work on together is about vocations and duty. Now, before you consider dropping everything and going to seminary, let me assure you that each of us has a vocation to follow. And it's your own path that I want to help us concentrate on today. Today we're going to look at all the ways that God calls us within our lives. So let's start out by just getting to figure out what this word, this idea of vocation means. If I asked you, what, what do you think the word vocation means? What might you answer? Type of work, calling. Okay, yeah. If I were to ask you what your vocation is, what might you tell me? Nursing. Nurse, all right, yeah. You know, it might be welder, it might be lab tech, it might be crew chief, accountant, teacher, beautician, nurse, comedian, custodian, all of these things are what we have come to understand the notion of vocation being. Vocation comes from the Latin word meaning calling, so all of that is correct. It was in the medieval church that it was strictly reserved for religious work, for religious callings. Only clergy were to have uh, some kind of calling toward church full-time ministry. Our original purposes from the beginning, according to God in, in Genesis 1 and 2, was that people, all people, were to have work. We were stewards, stewards of the earth, stewards of all that we've been given. We are to have dominion or uh, range or reign or work over and be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. In other words, we might look at it this way, that we are to fill the earth with the reign of God, the love of God. And in all our trades, building projects, we're to move it toward activity for the reign of God. All scientific inquiry, harnessing energies and technology for the reign and love of God. All building and culture and society helping one another, its institutions of society, all for the reign and love of God. Another way we know this is the uh, eventual result of the gospel lesson we heard today, which you know, Jesus makes people fishers of people. In other words, he gives them the great commission, go and make disciples, call people and let them know, tell them, about the love of God. We're to follow Jesus. And there are many, many ways to do so. And the second thing we've learned about uh, calling in, in our scripture text is that God has a unique plan for the persons he calls to use our unique gifts that we've been given in whatever circumstances we live out. In life, Christians have one or more obligations, as the readings kind of show us this morning. We have a calling to follow Jesus and a calling through however we live out our lives to share the good news and love of God in all we do. Now, God has created us and given us life. And when God has claimed us in baptism, has called us by name. God has made us new. We do not stay the same. We become a new and transformed person at that time. We're saints by our calling in baptism. That's another calling that we have. We are saints, every one of us. We are set apart. That's what saints mean. We are set Apart. And we live out that set apartness by telling others about the love of God in Christ Jesus. So whatever it means in 
in, in who we are. We are made special and changed. Whether it be for a husband or wife, son or daughter, an employee, a student, a neighbor, a friend, we are transformed and renewed for the work of sharing God's love. That's our first calling. And when we are changed and transformed in telling others about God's love, our work, perhaps we can look at it as having been transformed. Also, our motivations and our purposes around the work that we do can be changed. Maybe it's not what we're called to do or what we do that is changed, but why we do it for God. Maybe it's not that we change what we do to go to seminary and be a pastor to share God's love, but how we do what we do with the gifts we've been given with excellence. Each of us is unique. Something that I love to do, you might not like to do. What is in your mind? What is the best job or task or activity you've ever had. I invite you to think about that for a moment. Let it kind of bubble up. It doesn't have to be the work you do, the paid work that you do. Do it well, 
If it falls on your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures, like Shakespeare wrote poetry, like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets so well that the host of heaven and earth will have pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. All of our work becomes a work of faith. It's for God. So when we focus our life's calling on God rather than a paycheck or what glory we might get out of it, it's God's work, not our work. And the work we do every day, and when we know it's not for our own benefit, it can become for the common good. It's that expression of loving God and loving neighbor. Reminding ourselves of what motivates us to do our best in whatever God has called us to pursue can change and, and help others see that transformation. And understand that calling is what we were made for. Our life's calling, our life's passion. And that God has, in the process, woven our work into his own. So that we have significant and lasting impact on the world for good. Here's an example for you. A man named Phil Vischer. He had a passion for films. But he also wanted to serve God. He went to Bible college to train to, for ministry, thinking maybe he could be an educator. Those in ministry were the ones serving God, he thought. Everyone else was on the sidelines. So how can I serve God in this way? But eventually he dropped out of school and, and became the filmmaker that he had passion uh, to be. And when classmates went on to be the voice of God in pulpits, he became the voice of Bob Tomato and Larry the Cucumber and has had a lot of impact for God through the tales of Veggie Tales. The place God calls you is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. So said Frederick Meekner says, the place God calls you is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. In other words, all areas of our calling, we are meant to be salt and light in all we do. And we're to apply gospel values wherever we go and whatever, wherever our calls take us. What I would invite you to think about today is how does what you do every day reflect God's love and light in the world around you? How can it? And if it doesn't, what changes might you make so that it does? The second question I invite you to contemplate, you can answer it today for me or maybe in the next couple of weeks ahead as we continue to talk about being stewards and what work God gives us to do. How can we better use the gifts that God has given us to serve our family and friends and neighbor? And I make the invitation to you today to perhaps share your profession or your favorite gift or hobby with your church family. So I invite you to do that. You can write on one of the pew cards in your in the pews that we often use for prayer or collecting other information. I invite you to write down your name and that favorite work or hobby and turn it in at the offering plate. Uh, well, I guess we already did that. So we'll um, have the ushers co uh, perhaps collect it as we uh, come up for communion today. We'll put them in the offering. But I invite you to do that so we can sanctify or bless that work much as we did on Labor Day. But now we'll also consider creating a sharing board for our whole church family. Because when we know what it is we do, we might understand ourselves a little bit better and have the opportunity to use our 
vocational or called gifts all the more. So I close with uh, this word from Nelson Mandela. He said, there is no passion to be found in playing small, in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. Today I challenge you 